defensive lines and the offensive lines. And USV starts with, I suppose it was an onside kick, but nothing doing as Pandora recovers at the 48-yard line, and that's where that offense will take over. That ball was recovered by Jake Fisher, a junior offensive lineman. So here comes the Rocket offense, today led by quarterback Tanner Leakty, who isn't the, well, wasn't the starting quarterback at the beginning of the year. Carson Meyer was the starter, and now Leakty in there. 29-50 for the year, 355 yards and seven touchdowns. Lugabill lined up to his left, and we have an early flag. And it's against USV, so just like that, we start with five free yards for the Rockets. They move into Ram territory and have a first and five. Yeah, as I said, it's going to come down to the trenches, really, in this game, too. Who can control the offensive and defensive lines? And that's a huge offensive line you're looking out there for USV when they come out on offense. But, you know, they, a lot of those guys, like I said, play defense as well. So, you know, a lot of weight out there. Leakty in a deep squat to get this one. Now throws out to the right side. It's batted up in the air, and it's intercepted. Whoa. How about that? The big man with the pick, the truck, and now the Rams with the football. Big number 52, Kevin Smith, six foot one, 305 pounds. And Tanner Leakty felt every one of those oh, pounds man. on that hit. I'll tell you what, he ran like a fullback after he caught that ball. You know, just buried his shoulder right down and took Leakey right out of there. But, you know, I don't feel bad, Leakey. He probably takes a lot of people out there. He's a guy that's got <laughs> 39 pancake blocks as well on offense. So he's a guy that takes a lot of players out. Now I see how this offensive line can, you know, holds up against the Pando Grabolo's defensive line. And it's Maddox Underwood, the quarterback, handing to Sanders. Sanders down the right side and a nice early first down for the Rams. Underwood doesn't throw the ball often, as you said, Dar. 30 completions on 59 attempts for 341 yards, a touchdown and three interceptions this year. But as you mentioned in pregame, the story for the Rams, Alex Sanders, he carried the ball there. He averages 9.4 yards per carry. That's over 10 games. And let's see, 187 carries averages just under 10 yards. And you can see why. You can see the speed he's got when he gets the outside, runs around that, that outside edge, and uh, can just outrun players out there. So you really got to be, if you're Pandora Gabo, you got to hold your positions, and you got to get out on the edge real quick. This time they run to the left side, and it's a short pickup for the Rams on first down. And that time it was Jason Helton, the second leading rusher on this team. Now, Dar, he's the second leading rusher, but he has 1,200 less yards than Alex Sanders. Helton with 72 carries, 527 yards, and 10 touchdowns. Yeah, this is a Rams team that comes in averaging 312 yards rushing per game. You know, they only throw average 39 yards passing, so but 312 yards per game. Now Underwood looking to pass. Now moving back to the right side, throws over to Sanders. Sanders is open, gets a big block, heads down the right side, and another first down for the Rams, but a flag comes out. That's likely going to be an illegal blindside block. Yeah, yeah I think you're right, Evan. You know, but what great concentration by the quarterback just to find Sanders at all, because he was running for his life back here, and he just looked over there, and Sanders was just standing out there waiting. See what the referee has to say about that one. And it is a personal foul blindside block. So that's 15 yards against USV after starting this drive with a first down. And by the way, our first downs tonight sponsored by Root Lumber. Root Lumber has everything you need to get the job done, whether you're a contractor or a do-it-yourselfer. Visit us at rootlumber.com. Yeah, that's a big penalty because, you know, USV was moving the ball just a couple of plays and already down there inside the, in, the, in the red zone. But that's going to drop them back now, you know, we're going to have to start all, pretty much all over again. Looking at a second and 25 right now. Underwood with two runners in the backfield. Rolls out to pass once again. They set up a screen, and it's caught. Ooh. Actually, no, it's not. Probably wisely dropped yeah, there by Sanders. Not sure if it was intentional, but either way, it helps USB. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, it was, you know, that was either a really, really smart play or he just dropped the ball. But... You know, that wouldn't have gone for anywhere. Good good uh, defense there by Pandora Gilbo to get in there on that, sniff out that screen pass and just knock it down. So that's third and 25. Rams taking their time. Play clock down to 17. 
Still plenty of time to break the huddle with the play. Again, USV 8-2 and two this season. Yeah, they actually scored 86 points in one game this year. Oof. They'll hand this one to Sanders. He's looking for space, can't find any. Brought down in the backfield. It's a loss of yards, and now it's a fourth and probably 28 yards or so. Are they punt this one away? Yeah, think? I think they will. Well, it's hard to tell because Sanders, their punter, so he's still going to be out there. But he averages about 40 yards a punt. So, you know, if he uh, see what kind of touch he's got because he's not going to boom one into the end zone. He can try to get one inside the 10-yard line here. He is back in punt formation. Fourth and 26, the official yards to go. Excuse me. Good snap. Sanders does kick this one away down the right side, and it will be returned. Inside the five, it was, I believe, was that Ryan Roberts down there? Or, I'm sorry, Colin Harris. Hey, Colin Harris, and I can, it almost got the ball stripped away from him. You can tell it kind of pulled him around there because they were trying to pull that ball away from him. Good job by Harris to hang on to it. So first and ten for the Rockets, who got five free yards off a penalty and then threw an interception as it was blocked or knocked up at the line and intercepted by Kevin Smith. Rockets back to work. They'll hand this one off right side. Luganville looking for space, and he's brought down. Picks up a few on first down. Yeah, taken down there by number five, Maddox Underwood. Now there's a tank out there. When you look at Lucaville, you know, the contrast between Sanders and Lucaville, Sanders is kind of a slim type guy, you know, you know, a little taller. Luke and Bill just a bull. I mean, he, you know, he comes in here, you know, that a senior six foot two ten, and he, he's a solid two ten. Second down, six. Rockets left side this time. Luganville finds the edge. Luganville off to the races. Needs to beat Underwood, who brings him down. But a big pickup and a root lumber first down as he crosses the 40-yard line. Oh, nice play by Luganville. Nice job getting out there. Like I said, he's a he's a he's a stud. But you know, if you look at him, you know he's also quick. He's fast. He gets out on the outside edge, and he's got some speed out there as well. He's a tough guy to take down. Nice job by Underwood just to bring him down. One thing that uh, I didn't mention: Corey Gurton was taking the snaps at quarterback, freshman quarterback for this Rocket team. Yeah, they're split between the two quarterbacks and most of the night, I got a feeling. Gurdon hands this back to Lugan Bill. He's met in the backfield and brought down for a loss of yards. As a matter of fact, he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but either way, nothing doing for the Rockets on that play. That's a nice play, though. I mean, try to run it up the middle a little bit, a little bit off, off tackle, see if you can, you know, just kind of soften it up a little bit. You know, this is, like I said, this is a small USV squad, you know, really, you know, like 20-some players out there, 26 players maybe. And, uh, you know, by the time you get to the fourth quarter, you wonder how that's going to play out, particularly against a team like Pandora Gallo, who's hard-hitting and likes to run a lot. Gurton takes the snap. Play action this time as he looks to pass down the left side. And oh, nice that one grab. is caught. Coming back for it is the receiver. That's and Aiden that Morris. is Aiden Morris. Wow. Morris, the leading receiver on this team. 910 yards receiving on 55 receptions. 12 touchdowns to go along with it. And a good adjustment there to come back for that ball. Well, it certainly was. He, he was able to come back for it. And the biggest thing was get position in front of the defensive back, which was huge, and be able to leap up there and pull it down. So another root lumber first down for the Rockets. Gurton gives Luganville. Luganville breaks a couple tackles, still on his feet, still on his feet, still up. Now the ball comes out. And waiting for a call from the official. All right, so, or excuse me, Pandora keeps possession. Yeah, Braden Hegmeyer fell on that ball, but. Luganville had to hold on to that ball for a long time. Normally you see a whistle blown or hear yeah. a whistle blown. I'm surprised they let that play continue on the way it was, but 
you know, that's just the effort that Lukeville puts into every run that he does. He's going to keep moving until you blow that whistle. But, you know, that's a, that's dangerous when he comes to that because there's some, you know, the big guys out there for Upper Side of Valley are going to try to rip that away. They were able to, but Hegmeyer was able to fall on it. Now Leakty in the backfield. Leakty gets the handoff. He's looking for the edge, but he's brought down by Sanders in the backfield. I tell you what, Evan, this is shaping up to be a real defensive battle here between these two teams. Two teams are coming in averaging 40 points a game. You know, Pandora 40 points, 40.1, and Upper Side Valley 41.7 points a game. They don't give up a lot of points, just 16 for uh, for Pandora Gibbo, 15 for Upper Side Valley. But you know, right now the defenses are taking center stage. It's a loss of five, second down, 15. Girton rolling to the right side. Girton throws, and another comeback route, that time caught by Colin Harris. And Harris gets near the 15-yard line. They put him down at the 16. And so it becomes a third down six for the Rockets. Are you talking about Morris Harris coming in with 40, 45 catches, 653 yards, and seven touchdowns through the air? Luke and Bill back in the game, lined up behind Girton. Two wide receivers split out left. Girton wants to pass again, has a guy on the out route, and it's over his head and maybe intercepted. And it was indeed. Looks like Underwood out there, I think. Underwood snuck in behind the receiver. That ball floated just a bit, and he comes down with it for the big interception. And let's see, actually, I think that's Connor Scott, number eight for the defense. Those numbers on the front kind of hard to see as they bunch up on the pads. If it's Connor Scott, that's his second interception of the season. That ball went right through the hands of the, the receiver and right into Connor Scott's Good concentration by that young man. He's a junior, 5'10", 135 pounds playing defense back back there. So two interceptions now for this USV defense as they take over on offense once again. Sanders looking to the right side and nothing there. Good job by the left side of the Pandora Rockets defense. It's a beautiful night for football. You look oh, at the man. sky over here, you know, right across from us. Now, Dar, an early season game here at USV and you get about a half of the sun straight in your, straight eyes. in your eyes. Now we just get a beautiful sunset. You see a water tower out in the distance, just a quintessential Northwest Ohio rural picture. Yes, yeah, certainly is. Second down, 10. Underwood with the ball, wanted an option play, makes a nice cut up the field, but runs into a couple more tacklers. He'll pick up one or two on the play, a third down coming up. Yeah, I think Underwood was looking to pitch that ball a little, but Pandora was in there too quickly. You know, you didn't want to take the chance of throwing it out there and have somebody grab it right out of the air. Two-yard pickup, third down, eight. 424 left to go in the first quarter on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. Sprunger Insurance has locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Receiver split out wide right. They pitch it out right. Sanders looking for space, and he's brought down in the backfield. Great job by the Rocket defense forcing a three and out. My goodness. Got number 60 right there on the tackle. That's Dylan Fenber. Well, Two-yard loss. What, these defenses are really coming to play tonight, you know, just... Pandora Gilboa's defense can do a nice job pursuing down the line. It's going to put, give the Rockets great field position, too. Sanders in punt formation, just standing on the goal line. Gets this one away. It's going to bounce at the 45 and picked up. Here's Harris. Harris looking for space, and he gets about five yards, so the Rockets will take over from... The Ram 45-yard line, two interceptions already, but nothing hurt. Another chance to put some points on the board. Well, the Rockets coming out here just kind of mixing it up, running, you know, between the pass and the run. They're not sticking really with just the run. You know, they've, they've had a couple quarterbacks in there. 
you know, each of them has thrown an interception. But really, it's come down to, you know, just they're trying to mix up their, their play calling. They try to keep this USV team off, off stride a little bit. They split two wide receivers either way. One goes in motion. That's Harris. Morris, excuse me. Morris will get the pass. And Morris brought oh. down. Good play there by Underwood. That hey, young man's fired up, isn't he? I'll tell you, great job by Underwood. He just came in there and just, you know, he anticipated Morris grabbing that ball and just took him down right there on the spot. Didn't give him a chance to even take one step downfield. It's a loss of one. Second down 11 here for the Rockets. And quarterback Corey Girton, the freshman. Darn, I got to look at him early in the season in a, a blowout. He came in and threw a couple really nice-looking passes against Bluffton. Now tasked with winning a playoff game for the Rockets. Girton hands this off. Luganville runs right into Kevin Smith, who has an interception and now a tackle right at the goal line. Or excuse me, at the line of scrimmage, not the goal line. I'll tell you what, Kevin Smith, a senior, 6'1", 305 pounds. And that's, a, that's like running into a brick wall right there. And he grabbed Lucaville right around the shoulders and just, you know, pulled him right back across the line. Already to the two-minute mark here. Not many stoppages. Both teams keeping the ball on the ground for the most part. Curtin, two wide receivers split left. He rolls that way. Still looking. Now throws another comeback route. That one's caught. And he's going to have, at least he's going to be close to the first down. He needs the 35. And they do say first down. Rockets and another root lumber first down. Great catch out there, too, just to, you know, pull it right off the turf. So the Rockets with new life as the clock hits 149. It'll start ticking here in a moment. We expected a fast game just because the two teams are running teams, but, we, you know, really Pandora's thrown a lot more than I thought they would throw. Now Luganville, left side. Nice cut up field, still on his feet. Luganville brought down from behind. I think he actually stepped out before the tackle, but either way, it's enough for the root lumber first down as the Rockets get down to the 21. I th he's so smooth. I mean, he, he kind of slid right down that right, that left side, you know, just kind of sideways it looked like almost right between defenders referees having a quick chat yeah. having a long chat <laughs> spread formation Two split either way. It's Morris in motion. They give it to Luganville. Luganville looking for space. Doesn't find any. As he's brought down after a gain of one or two. Yeah, he's not buying a lot of turf right there. Off tackle on the left side. He's going to, you know, when he goes to that side there, he needs to step out and get around a little bit more like he did on the last run before this one because if he cuts it on the inside, he's running into some big, big walls right there. Gain of one, second down nine here. Three wide receivers split to the right. They give it back to Luganville. Cuts up field, a nice pickup. He's going to be shy of the first down, but a third and very manageable coming up for the Rockets. Now, in retrospect, the, you know, Pandora Gilboa does have a great kicker in Elam Suter out there. That That's right. That's two for three on field goals this, this season, so... If they can get down in that, if they get this drive stalled, you still have that guy to bring in there to get three points on the board. Girton has two in the backfield. Lined up right next to him is number 37, but Luganville with a carry. He's going to be close, but just short. I don't have a 37 on my roster, so I apologize for that. He's going to be a yard short. So a fourth and one decision time for the Rockets. They've had some success running the football, but we're not going to find out until after the break. The end of the first quarter is here quickly, and your score on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard, 0-0 at USB. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN.
Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! Welcome back for the start of the second quarter. Still 0-0 on that Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. And a fourth and one coming up for the Pandora Gilboa Rockets. Wyatt Russell lined up by Girton. Ethan Luganbill in the backfield. They'll run it right up the middle. And Luganbill gets hit. Needs to get forward. I don't think he does. We'll see what the referees have to say. Boy, it's going to be close. They may have to measure this one. And they don't even measure. They yeah. say turnover on downs. And it is USV football. No. Lucaville ran right into number 50, Blaine Castle, 270 pounds, and Kevin Smith, 305 pounds. So, you know, if you can, if you can push your way past those two guys, you, you deserve <laughs> that first down. Again, another tough, you know, tough defensive stand by, you know, upper side of the valley, and Pandora's done the same thing. So, you know, a couple turnovers in the first quarter, got neither team anything. And Sanders nowhere to go as he's brought down by Wyatt Russell and Aiden Morris picks up a couple on first down. Second and a long eight coming up for the Rams. Again, a quick moving game as both teams adamant on running the football. Yeah, USV is not throwing the ball really that I mean, once, I think. But, uh, Pandora's thrown a little bit more than, the, than I thought they would, but you know, still, it's mostly the run game. Sanders gets a pitch to the right, tries to go oh, back yeah. to the left, and he's brought down in the backfield. Ethan Luganbill gets back there and breaks it up, and it's third and long for the Rams. You got a feeling that these two teams are keying on the running backs? <laughs> yeah, what gave that away? <laughs> wow. I mean, just, you know, just... Blitzing in there with Luca Villa is able to get to the backfield quickly and take Sanders down. And I think it's going to be back and forth between those guys. It's going to take one big play to break yeah. this thing open, I'll tell you. And either team's capable of that. Just a bro broken tackle or two. Yeah. And you see some running backs go for big yards. If they can get you know get past that uh, linebacker, you know, linebackers, they can break it off. Underwood tries to throw. He goes to the right side. It's caught by Mason Thompson, and Thompson's upended. The football came out. USB jumps on top, well short of the first down. It'll be fourth and 10, and another punt coming up for Sanders. Yeah, Blaine Castle fell on that ball, but again, the, the Rocket defense holds. I mean, forcing another punt. So... It's fourth down and nine officially. Rockets with some personnel issues as they get a man off the field. Here's the kick, end over end. Gets past Morris as he picks it up at the 35. Ends up being a really nice punt. A great punt, and Morris probably got a hand on that thing. Did look like that, yeah. You could hear the... Uh, USB coaching staff over there, you know, get to the ball because, you know, it's obviously they thought the same thing, but Morris got a hand on that thing. And it was dangerous, Morris just picking it up back there too because there's two guys coming right down on him. Punts that bounce like that can really cause some oh, precarious situations, Dar. Especially on the, you know, on regular turf too. Absolutely. Now play action. They've got a man deep. This ball goes over the top, and it's caught. Here's the big play you're talking about as Aiden Morris He's prances in. into the end zone for the Rocket touchdown. Broken coverage by the Rams, and Morris was wide oh, open. Just was. an easy pitch and catch. And Morris has too much speed. You cannot let that young man out there. Great throw, though, just to catch him in stride. You know, that's a long throw, too, for the young quarterback. And caught him right in stride, and he took it right to the house. What, a 65-yard, maybe? Yes, absolutely. And our first score on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. Suter on for the PAT to make it 7 nothing. Q 
kick is up, and it came off the foot a little funny, but it still goes between the uprights for a point. And your score with 9.25 to go in the second quarter, it's Pandora 7, USV nothing on WOSN. Tonight's first downs are sponsored by Root Lumber. Root Lumber has everything you need to get the job done. Whether you're a contractor or a do-it-yourselfer, visit us at rootlumber.com. Welcome back to USB High School where the Rockets have put up our first score of the game in the second quarter on a 65-yard touchdown pass. Now they'll kick it back to the Rams, but that was that big play you were talking about, yeah, it was Doc. a big play. You know what you're talking about? We're expecting maybe on the running game because that's <laughs> right. what they do and everything else. And what they do, Pandora comes out here and throws head. But, you know, a little broken coverage, like you said, Evan, between the, by USV. But, well, I'll tell you what, you get Aiden Morton out there and with his speed, and if he can outrun the defensive backs, which he did in that case, you know, you're not going to catch him. Another short kickoff and a short return to follow. USB will take over from around the 36 or 37 yard line. Really trying to get that run game going. They haven't found a lot of space for Sanders to run through tonight. And we came out, you know, the first carry he had tonight went for what, maybe nine yards, you know, right off the bat. But since that time, Pandora Gobo's done a nice job of getting out on the edge and not letting him make that turn back there, forcing him to try to go to the inside, you know, you know, following that big blockers up front. but. Pandora's linebackers have been able to plug the holes up. Now we're in shotgun formation as Sanders, no, excuse me, Underwood took the snap, hands it off to the left side, and that is, looks like enough for the root lumber first down. I don't know if I've seen US Vigo shotgun this year. No. Not that I've seen them a ton. I'll tell you what. You can see the Rockets, you know, defensive guys trying to take that ball away from him as he was carrying it. And that's one stat that really stuck out to me, you know, when it comes to the USV. You know, they have, they have not, they fumbled one time this season. Whew. And that's when, you know, when you took it, 474 touches counting, rushing, passing, kick returns, the whole bit. Now Underwood runs to the left side, picks up a couple. Interesting shotgun look from USB. They've been under center for the entire game up to this point. And elaborate a little bit on that. Sanders has not fumbled all season long. This guy's carried the ball, you know, 187 times coming into this game. Mm. And you know teams have been able, been able to hit him hard and everything else, and he still hasn't given it up. A strong runner from a strong athletic family. Connor Sanders graduating. Now Alex uh -huh. tries to get upfield, but he's brought down in the backfield once again by big number 60, Dylan Fenbert. He's Five been a menace 11, in the backfield, Doc. 5'11", 255 pounds, and he's been able to slip right through there between the, you know, the, the two guys up front, the right guard and, or the, yeah, the right guard and the uh, right tackle, and find his little spot right there. So it brings up a third down 10 from the 45 of USB. They split two out right, one out left. It's a big, big play for USB. They need to get some kind of momentum. Now three out to the right. They run a little bubble screen. Sanders with the catch. Sanders nowhere to go as a flag comes in. Ooh, that may be a face, face mask. It's a loss on the play. Yeah, that may, that may have been. Still waiting for the official call from the referee. I think they want to know if the Rockets will accept their decline. It's a block in the back against the Rams. And it is declined, so it brings up a fourth down 12. Still seems like a punting situation for USV. You might want to drop back a little bit farther back here because <laughs> the way that Sanders has been kicking the ball. Because he's been getting the rolls too, so you want to get back. Yeah, he's going to step back about four more yards. Sanders with the rugby-style kick. 
Kicks it right to left as it bounces inside the 20 and bounces back to the 15 yard line. I tell you, that rugby style kick that he kicks is why he's getting those rolls that he's getting too. End over end punts. And those also open up the opportunity for running the football yeah. down the right side. If the receiving team doesn't cover that up, you just have that option to take off. And the Rockets only send one guy back on those kickoff and punt returns. So you know, if they send another guy back here, maybe they'll get that opportunity if Sanders keeps running out there and kicking it like that. Empty backfield now for Girton as the Rockets start this drive from the 15. Three wide receivers left, one to the or two to the right, excuse me. Girton, comeback route, Morris with the catch. And Morris up to the 20 yard line, so a gain of five on the play. Obviously the Rockets you know, coaching staff has seen something in this and, you know, and scouting out the USB because they're throwing the ball. You know, they brought Girton in, you know, at quarterback, and they're letting the young freshman throw the ball a lot more than I would expect him to do in a playoff game. I mean, it's not that he, he hasn't got good stats from throwing the football, except he's thrown too many interceptions, but that's, that's not unusual for a young kid. Now he's blitzed as Sanders gets through untouched and gets the sack. Wow, I'll tell you what. Nobody touched him coming in there. You know, that's Sanders. You, know. you can't, you cannot let that guy go on block like that. It was well timed as well as he broke the plane basically right as that ball was snapped. This makes a third and 17 now for the Rockets. But worse off, they're right, you know, with the goal line right behind them. Trips out left. Girton. Looking that way, they throw it to Morris. Morris makes one guy miss, runs into Luganville. And he gets up the field, gets to the 12, the 13 yard line, excuse me, but it's going to be fourth and long. And here comes the punting unit. Again, this is a dangerous punt position to be in too when you got your, your goal line right behind you. Aiden Miller to do the punting, unless it's Morris. Struggling to see the number from here. It is Morris, as that one's kicked up near the 48 yard line and a fair catch called for by Alex Sanders. That's a nice kick. That's probably about 46 yard punt right there. And they put it down at the 49. He caught it at the 48, no question, but yes. And it took a step back, I guess. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the chains have gone way too far. Still going. There we go. Now we're getting it figured out. Good job over there, fellas. Yeah, they're just working the kinks out of their legs. So I'm going <laughs> to walk, walk back and forth a little bit. You know, I'm a little stiff right now. Underwood heads back under center as Sanders runs one right up the middle. Falls over top of a few guys to pick up two. Yeah, one of those few guys was Dylan Fenberg again. He's, doing, he's having a great job in the middle right there. And he, you know, he's going up against, you know, those big guys up front and he's holding his own against them right now. Already down to four minutes and 20 seconds to go in this half. My Folks, goodness. it's 7.35. Game started at 7. <laughs> These quarters started eight minutes. But <laughs> I guess. Quick moving game. Both teams moving the ball effectively as Sanders gets it on the counter. Looking to the left side. Sanders gets the edge, gets near the first down. And he's going to be close. We'll see where the official spot is. He's going to be about a yard short, I think. Good eyes there as they put it right down on the 40. He needs the 39, so it's third down one. But that right there, Evan, is when Sanders is most effective. When you can allow him to be able to get around to the outside edge and stuff, he can make that turn and he can really turn on the Jets out there. And, you know, those kind of plays right there, we run the reverse around with him and stuff for something, you know, I think USB is going to have to do a lot more of tonight. Give it to Sanders and... He has plenty for the root lumber first down. 
Needed one, picked up three. Well, this is a drive that USB has to finish off. I mean, they've, they've come close. They've gotten good field positions. They've had a couple interceptions. They just haven't been able to put it in the end zone. And this is the drive they've got to do it on. You know, they'd like to get the score right here, at least tie it up before they go into the break. Yeah, three minutes, 27 seconds and counting on the clock. Both teams with three timeouts left. Sanders goes in motion. Underwood wants to pass, now cuts up the field and he gets rid of it. It hits the turf. He's in the grass with Wyatt Russell right there and that was a dangerous you know, throw away by Underwood too because that really only hits the turf right about a, you know, a yard in front of the defensive back. Looked like one that they could have considered at least for intentional grounding, but since he was wrapped up, sometimes they give you the benefit of yeah. the doubt. A big play here for uh, USV to keep this drive alive. Second down, they pitch it out to the right side. This one carried by Ryan Roberts. Roberts up to the 30 yard line. I think it, is that Roberts' first carry tonight? First time I've yeah. called his name at least. He's got 310 yards coming in here. Nice job there by uh, Aiden Morse though to get a hand on his ankle and knock him, you know, knock him down and they were able to finish him off from there. But you know, again, another running back here. He's only a freshman too. He's put five, five scores in his resume as well. Right future for USV as the center forgets to snap the football. The whole team goes. And so that makes third and short, third and eight. Yeah, a little mix up there on the calling. Drew Sanders didn't hear the, apparently he wanted to snap the ball. Stick with three runners in the backfield. Roberts and Helton, the up backs as they pitch it back to Sanders. Sanders still no space. First hit was Ethan Luganbill and cleaned up by a host of tacklers, including Fenbert. And now fourth down. It was a pickup of two, so it's fourth and six. I'll tell you what, you know, you gotta be impressed with the Rockets, you know, defensive line right now. They're really holding their own against a huge Offensive line for uh, USV. You know, the, the USV is more effective if they can get Sanders the outside. I'm, that's just the way I see it right now because he's not been able to get too much yardage when he's trying to go off tackle. Particularly when you're going to that right side where Finberg's been standing because he's not letting anybody by him. It seems like USV will call a timeout. They do indeed. So 143 on the clock. It's the first timeout taken by USV as we step aside. 7-0. Rockets on top on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! Fourth down six for USV. They're going to go for this. Underwood under center. Underwood pitches it outside. They're gonna run a quarterback, or excuse me, a running back pass, but Sanders pulls it down because no one was there, and that's really good discipline from the Rocket defense. So he was, they held the positions, and the big thing right there was when Sanders looked over there, and I think he was looking over at Underwood, you know, breaking out there to the left. Underwood still had his back to him when he, when he looked to throw the ball to him, so he pulled it back in then at that point and tried to, to run it himself for the first down. But, you know, great job by the Rockets defense again to stop USV in their tracks and just, you know, take the wind out of their sails again. Now, it's not like USV hasn't had the opportunities in, in the field position. They just haven't been able to finish off their drives. Morris goes in motion. Curtin with the snap. Looks to pass, has a guy in the seam, and it's caught. Nice grab there by Aiden Morris. 
a nice, nice route run there by Aiden Morris, too. Broke off to the left side, cut back in and over the middle, and, you know, Gurton with a rope right to him. Rock is back to work quick. Comeback route, and out of bounds goes Colin Harris. Harris with a seven-yard gain. So we, see it. we just saw a rope thrown by Gurton right over the middle. Then we just want a little bit of a more of a finesse throw to the bit into the sideline by Gurton. So that freshman, I mean, I, I, I'm impressed. I mean, this is a, a playoff game here, and he's not showing any signs of being a young kid. Sanders blitzes again. This time he's picked up as Gurton throws down the right side, and that's out of reach of his target. Aiden Morris, so third and three coming up. 122 on the clock. The Rockets with three timeouts. USB with two. There's a, a little bit touchy pass there right between two defenders. Went one right by Morris. Morris kind of held up a little bit. Wasn't able to complete that route the way he wanted to. Three wide receivers out to the right side. Girton, quick toss. And that one's caught. It's Morris again with the first down. And Root Lumber busy tonight with those root number first downs for the Rockets. Tell you what, I never would have expected this from the Rockets tonight as many times as they're throwing the ball. Gurton wants to toss it again. Gurton goes deep down the left for Morris and that one is incomplete. Almost intercepted on the diving effort from Maddox Underwood. But nothing hurt as the clock stops at 106. And go for broke, and that's what they did on that play right there. Again, showing the arm strength of uh, Corey Gurton. There was a flag in the backfield, and it is a hold against the Rockets. So they'll subtract five from that play. Or, excuse me, ten. And since it's a spot foul, it ends up being about, let's see, 11 yard penalty. It'll repeat a first down at least. Three split out right. Gurton throws back to oh Luganville. He breaks a couple tackles. Luganville up the left side. Luganville goes out of bounds, but a big gain. All right, now how, how in the world did he catch that ball? I have I no mean, idea. I mean, there was four guys right there in there, and how in the world did Gurton get the ball to him in the first place? That's a, that's the big thing right there. And then Lukeville just kind of slid past the defender and, and was gone. My big pickup brings up second and two. Gurton has Russell to his right, Luganville behind him. They'll hand this off this time. Luganville running over a couple tacklers as he has enough for the root lumber first down. And the Rockets will take a timeout with 50 seconds to go in the second quarter. We'll step aside as well. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to USV. First and 10 for the Pandora Rockets after a timeout. They send again. it down to the end zone, and oh, that one goodness. is caught right at the goal line. I think he knocked the wind out of himself, though, when he came down. He came down on the football. That Morris out there as well. It is Morris with the great catch, and the Rockets knocking on the door of their second score of this game. But they're going to take a look at Morris as we step aside. The injured player, Aiden Morris, able to get up under his own power, head to the sideline. Good news as the Rockets hand this to Ethan Luganville, who's wrapped up in the backfield. Stays on his feet, but ultimately goes down. Forward progress has him down around the six yard line. And the Rockets will take a timeout. Want to thank our first down sponsor again tonight. That's Root Lumber. 
Root Lumber has everything you need to get the job done, whether you're a contractor or a do-it-yourselfer. Visit us at rootlumber.com. Only one score in this game so far. It's a 65-yard touchdown pass from Pandora's Corey Girton to Aiden Morris. Now the Rockets knocking on the door of their second touchdown with 35 seconds left in the second quarter. Just could put a dagger in it real quick, you know. Going in down seven to nothing is one thing because you've had your opportunities for USV, but if you let them score right now, you know, and you have to take that into the locker room, you're going to have to make a lot of adjustments. They have to make a lot of adjustments anyhow because, you know, to try to figure out how to get some offense going. But uh, this is a big, big thing right here. Second down goal from the five. Girton, fade route, end zone, touchdown! <sighs> Colin Harris with the grab, Girton. The freshman quarterback with his second touchdown pass of the night, and it's 13-0 Rockets on top of the PAT pending. And again, that's finesse by him on that pass, too, just to put it in. The only place that anybody can catch it was Colin Harris right there in that corner of that end zone. That's the eighth touchdown catch for Colin Harris this season. But, uh, you know, like I said, we've seen Girton throw some ropes out there. We've seen him throw some, you know, touch passes, and that was one of those right there. Suter on for the PAT. Snaps low, but they get the hold down. The kick is up, and it is plenty good. 14-0 to score now. Rockets on top with 28 seconds to go. Now, USV does have two timeouts left, so we'll see what they decide to do. They haven't passed the ball particularly well, and really this Pandora defense has been great in the passing game and the run game. Well, the biggest thing for the Rockets tonight that I've seen out there is the fact that they're they're very disciplined on their defense. They're holding their positions. They know where they're supposed to be, and they're not getting out of those positions because if they do, you know, they're going to get burnt by Sanders particularly. But they're, even their defensive ends, you know, and their linebackers know which way they're supposed to be, you know, and who they're supposed to be, you know, going up against. And, you know, they're doing a great job. And Dylan Fenberg is just playing out of his mind in there, just shutting down that middle and forcing USV to alter their game plan a little bit. This is huge, you know, be down two scores going into that, you know, into the break. And you got to be careful here on a kickoff return because, again, you got, you know, Sanders back there who's capable of breaking at any time. Suter hasn't kicked any deep tonight. He will continue that trend as... This one goes through the legs of USV, finally picked up. And no return, really. They might have gotten a yard out of it. So 22 seconds on the clock. Again, two timeouts left for the Rams. They can try to get something on the board here before halftime. Ball starts on the 25-yard line. And they're going to come out and shotgun. Three wide receivers out right, one to the left. Quick pass. Right side, Sanders needs to make a man miss. He does. Sanders wants to throw, now puts it in the air, and it's knocked down. A strange play there is it was. Sanders. Looked like he might want to run the ball instead, put it up in the air and over the head of his target. So second down 10. Yeah, and I'm not sure which target he was trying to go for because there was another guy downfield as well that he may have looked at as well. But, you know, he was kind of trying to throw it on the run, crossed his body a little bit, you know, and he had no real momentum behind him. So, yeah, it, it was a strange play all the way around. I think he would have been better off maybe just tuck it in and try to get that extra two or three yards, but he didn't want the clock to run out on him either. 13 on the clock. Keep this on the ground up the middle. And I don't believe USB will take a timeout. They're going to let this tick down to halftime. And at the half, it's 14-0 Rockets on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. We'll step aside. Second half coming up after this on WOSN.
Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! Welcome back for the start of the second half. The Rockets kicking off to the USB Rams. And they try to make something happen up the right side, but eventually brought down right at the 40-yard line. The Rockets leading this one 14 to nothing after two passing touchdowns. Not something we necessarily expected at the start of this game, but the passing game working for Pandora tonight. Certainly is with their freshman quarterback out there, Corey Gurdon's having a great first half. You know, it'll be interesting to see what kind of adjustments the USB comes out here, you know, to try to get their, their offense going. They just haven't had anything really in sync. They've, they've had the opportunities. They've gotten in good position and stuff, but they just haven't been able to finish it off. We run to the outside. That's Ryan Roberts. He's brought down in the backfield. That's Derek Mag on the end on the tackle. That's the first time we've called his name tonight, but I'm sure he's been active all night. USB's had a couple drives where they've moved the football, but they've come up short on both of them, as evidenced by the zero on the scoreboard. That one goes for a loss of two. And again, it shows Pandora Gilboa's Rockets defense and what they're able to do. That case there, Derek Mag had his assignment. Stay on that side right there. You know, wait for the guy to come around to you. Don't try to go over to the, you know, think he's going the other way. Now right side goes Sanders. Sanders picks up, looks like he gets about five, maybe six yards. Ethan Luca Bill on the tackle. As a matter of fact, give him seven to bring up third down six. Luganville a little quiet on offense for Pandora tonight. Both of these defenses have done a relatively nice job in the run game. Underwood goes under center for this third and six. Pitches it to the right side. Sanders nowhere to go. And again, the left side of the Rocket defense doing a nice job. Big 67 getting in there for the Rockets. Maybe that was 57. 57, rather. That's Eli Luganbill. Aiden Morris there as well. So fourth down six coming up. And decision time here. Rockets trying to get some personnel figured out. They get two guys off the field. Sanders running to the right. Now kicks it away. Nice high kick. As it bounces at the 35-yard line and takes a USB hop back a couple yards. Rockets will start from the 19. Rockets came into tonight seven and three. The regular season total playing in the Blanchard Valley Conference. USB eight and two in the NWCC. You know, I'll tell you, you know, thing with Matt Hershey and his coaching staff, one of the things that, you know, we talked about the keys of the game that he came up, you know, wanted, he wanted physicality up front and he's getting that tonight. He wanted to create negative plays on defense and he's getting that as well. And he wanted to break tackles on offense, and his, his receivers are doing that for him tonight. Gurton back to work. He hands it to Luganbill. Luganbill, right side, five comes out. We'll have a hold. Run goes for about six yards, but the flag will negate those yards. We haven't had a whole lot of flags tonight. I mean, Maybe three or four in the first half. First one here in the second half. So a 10-yard penalty. Drops the ball back to the nine-yard line. So first down, 20. Again, the Rockets are going to have to bring it out from the shadow of their goal line. I can see him, you know, just trying to get a nice run here to get him out of that position right now. And Gurdon's going to throw it. Gurdon out to the left side, caught by Colin Harris. And Harris gets back near the line of scrimmage, but the ball came out. 
And it was recovered by USV. I missed that part of the play. Yeah, I did too. And so the Rams take over the most anticlimactic fumble call I think I've ever had. Really? I think it was Ryan Roberts maybe that dropped on, down on the ball. So now the Rams come out and they start a drive from the Rocket 20. It's the sixth fumble this season for the Rockets. And they've lost five of them. He'll go shotgun, trips right. Sanders in the quarterback spot, he'll run. Right side, Sanders trying to get the edge, but he's wrapped up by Morris and brought down. Still picks up a couple. Looked like he could have maybe cut that inside on that play. Yeah, I think he could have on that one there. Boy, he's having a rough night tonight, but then again, they're keying on him all night long. He's going to have to, you know, come up with something different. Maybe get away from that right side, try to go around the left side. He's had some success if he gets around that left side corner. It's a pickup of three, brings up second down seven. They stay in that same formation. This time Sanders runs to the left, and he's brought down after another nice pickup. Third and short coming up for the Rams. It's a big third down play here for, for the Rams. They really don't have a field goal kicker on their squad. They, they don't even try extra points when they do score. They, you know, they Most of their extra points have come on uh, two point conversions, 10, 26 of them in fact this season. Same formation once again. Sanders, right side. Sanders, nowhere to go, wrapped up. Brought down short of the line to gain. He gets a small pickup. But it's fourth down and long two, maybe three yards to go. A good push by the uh, front line of the uh, Bend Oregon Royal Rockets defense, along with Ethan Lukenbill also coming in there. Stay in that formation with Sanders at quarterback. Trips bunch to the right. Sanders running to the right. Sanders gets forward, dives, needs the 10. Looks like he's short. We'll see what happens. This is all going to come down to the spot by the referees. And he's short, looks like. Mm -hmm. Still waiting. It is a turnover on downs. Wow. The Rockets hold strong once again. We've seen that a couple times tonight. I'll tell you what, for the Rams, I mean, you, you, you know, this is, this is a momentum killer for them again because, you know, you know down there you get, a, you get a turnover by the Rockets. You get inside there, you know, their they're, uh, yardage. You know, you got an opportunity again and just can't push it through. Rockets back to work with three wide receivers. Split out to the right side. Girton with Luganbill to his left. They'll run this one right side with Luganbill. Luganbill brought down. Picks up a yard or two. Just no space for him to get upfield. Looked like Sanders again on the tackle on that side over there. Able to chase Luganbill down. Those two have been going at each other all night long. Either, you know. Defensive wise, you know, one one going after the other one, then flip it over the other way. It's a pickup of two. Second down eight. Curtin the snap. Hands it to Luganville. Now some space for Ethan to get upfield. Luganville still on his feet, finally pushed out of bounds, but it's a root lumber first down for the Rockets. What a great run by Ethan Lukeville on that one there, man. Just lumbering down the sideline, just bouncing off of guys and finding a hole every place he can. He might have had a, a penalty on this play, excuse me. There's a flag down right on the sideline at the 30-yard line. Either a hold or a block in the back. We'll have to see what the referee has to say. They'll repeat second down. And it's a block in the back. So with the penalty, the ball moves back to the 19-yard line. So it's a replay of second down. And it's a second and two. 
wow, what a tough break. And great run there by Lukaville, but you can see why he was able to break loose, apparently, even with a block in the back on the Rockets. Low snap, they get it to Luganville. He spins off a tackler, and he does pick up the root lumber first down. Rockets, if they can get that run game going, it's going to be really tough for USB to climb back into it. Well, and for a couple of reasons. One, you know, is the fact that you're, you're eating an awful lot of time off the clock right now, and you're, you know, physicality of this game, the, you know, the physical play. There's not a big roster, like we said, for USV on the sidelines. Not a lot of replacement. Most guys going both ways, you know, for them. So, you know, you get into the fourth quarter, that's going to play a part. Here's a pass down the left side. That one's caught. Grabbed by Colin Harris. Harris pushed out of bounds. The USV fans want an offensive pass interference. They may have a case, but no flag down. And it's a big, big pickup for the Rockets and another root lumber first down. Another great pass by Corey Gurton. I'll tell you what, that was a touch pass to the outside on, on that sideline. A great catch by Colin Harris going up. And you're right, Evan. I, they may have had a case, but <laughs> without a flag down, it really doesn't matter at this point. So the ball up to the Ram 30-yard line. Curtin has Luganville lined up behind him. Pitches it out right. Luganville trying to make a guy miss. Still on his feet. And Sanders brings him down from behind. But a big pickup again for the Rockets. And a root lumber first down as they are moving the ball very efficiently on this drive. Yeah, we talked about Lukeville, and, he, you know, he's just brute force of that young man because, you know, again, somebody was able to get a hand on his thigh, but you're going to take more than that to bring him down because he's just going to bounce right off of that, and that's what he was able to do, get another 10 yards after that. If the Rockets push this in, like you said, Evan, this could be a real dagger for the, for the Rams. First and 10 from the 11-yard line. Girton passes right side, end zone, and incomplete. Another good-looking ball, though. Just a tough one to catch. Nothing hurt. Second down, 10. Yeah, thrown to the only place that his receiver can get to it again in that corner of the end zone. Just throwing it over the defensive back, just a little bit out of his reach. I wouldn't be surprised to see him not go to that again, only on the opposite side this time. They stay in that formation. And whistle from the referee. An equipment problem or something? Uh. No, there's a referee out of position, so he heads back. And Get things back underway with 5.16 on the clock in the third quarter. Girton rolls right, has a man, it's caught. Aiden Morris with the grab this time. Now the thing is, is Aiden Morris is only a junior, so he's got another year to go, and Corey Girton's only a freshman, so you can look for some big things back in the next year. Colin Harris, only a junior as well. That's right. A lot of weapons coming back. Certainly a big gap will be left by Ethan Luganville, but this offense has weapons like Dar said. They hand to Luganville. Luganville right side. And Luganville into the end zone. Touchdown, Rockets. Well, there's your bread and butter guy, and he just proved it again right there. You know, just a strong run right over uh, right tackle and just right into the end zone. Touchdown number 30 for Ethan Luganville this season. Now Suter on for the PAT. It's 20 to nothing on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. Ethan Suter now 52 for 55 on PATs. Make it 53 for 56 as we step aside. 21 nothing, Rockets on top.
Tonight's first downs are sponsored by Root Lumber. Root Lumber has everything you need to get the job done. Whether you're a contractor or a do-it-yourselfer, visit us at rootlumber.com. Welcome back to USV, where Pandora leads 21-0 in this round one of the OHSAA playoffs. And a nice tackle there on the kick coverage by Lucas Deckard. Roberts on the return, and back out comes the USV offense, who have been stopped short on fourth and short two times in this game. Couple turnovers on interceptions. Just not able to finish drives. A couple, you know, a couple turnovers on interceptions. A, a turnover on the Rockets on a fumble too. You know, they've had their opportunities. They just have not been able to get in sync enough to, to finish off any of these drives. Now looking to pass as Sanders throws over the top. Ooh. Caught by Mason Thompson. And that's enough for a root lumber first down. And Mason Thompson paid the price for catching that ball too. He was hammered in the back of Carson Meyer. And you said at the top of the broadcast, Connor San or Alex Sanders, excuse me, does it all for this USV team. And we've seen him line up at quarterback, but he runs it primarily. And now throwing some passes with his team down 21-0. Yeah, they're trying everything. They're pulling everything out of the playbook that they can to try to get something going. He wants to pass again. Throws this left. Nice ball. That comes out. And the referee says incomplete. Good for USV as that was going to be a... Scoop and score from Pandora, but second and 10 coming up instead. Sanders throwing a nice ball, though. I mean, you know, if you can't get it on the run, you give it to the big guy and let him throw the ball. That was right on the money, too, but just, you know, dropped by the receiver. He again got hammered by the, by the defensive back, you know, Carson Meyer over there. Second and 10, man in motion, flag comes out. False start against USV, drops him back five yards to bring up second and 15. And every time, you just cannot seem to get the, you know, the one play, or two plays in every drive has really hurt them. And, you know, a penalty where they don't, you know, when you got something going, and or you turn, you know, I don't know. It's just not something that I would expect to see from USB. Sanders rolling to his left. He's going to pull the ball down and try to run. He gets positive yardage and ends up being a really nice pickup by Sanders. He falls into the kicking net on the Pandora side. Yeah, it looked like he was going to be brought down in the backfield again. But he was able to escape that one and really turned that into a nice gain. He gets into rocket territory up to the 45-yard line, so that brings up a third down three. Another big play here for USV. They need this one. They need to convert this third down, which they haven't been able to do a whole lot of tonight. Three receivers split out right. Sanders running to the right side. Sanders makes one miss. Sanders up the field, hit hard, but he picks up the root lumber first down. Ethan Lugenbill laying the lumber. Yeah, that was another one where he escaped there because it looked like he's going to be dropped in the backfield again. Able to get away from that one. Ball up to the 40-yard line for first and 10. Clock under three and a half in this third quarter. You can tell from the body language of Sanders when he went back to the huddle that he felt that one from yeah. Bill. Can't blame him. This time they split the formation. Three out left. One man wasn't set, but no flag comes out. Sanders throws over the top. He has a man open. That's Jason Helton. Helton with the catch. Makes one miss. Makes two miss. Dives. Scores. Touchdown Rams. How about the pass from Alex Sanders right over the top down the middle? Perfect throw. I mean, right on the money. Receiver only had to come back maybe a half a step just to catch that ball. 
The Rams needed that one as they cut into this lead. Dar said they always, they always go, go for, for two. two. 26 conversions on two points. They've only tried five point after kicks, so. They've converted 17 rushing and nine receiving on two point conversions. They're gonna set the ball on the left hash. Sanders still at quarterback. They bunch that trips on the right side. Now the throw, end zone, ball in the air, and it is caught. A tough one there and a hard earned eight points for the USV Rams as we step aside. 21 to eight, Rackets on top on WOSN. Twenty-one to eight, the score here at USV Pandora on top of the Rams. But the Rams with the score. And a lot of times we see teams get their first score of the game and then go on a run as this one's booted up in the air and over the shoulder catch by Colin Harris as he returns up the left side and a nice return gets. The Rockets up to the 46-yard line. Well, now it's up to USV defense. They've got to come through now. They've, you know, the offense has put eight points on the board, and really, you know, USV needed that big break right there. They needed a long play like that. A nice pass by Sanders right to Jason Helton, but you know, for the score. But you know, now the defense has really got to keep Andor Gilboa in their territory so they can get good field position again. Curtin puts a man in motion, he hands it. That's Aiden Morris. Morris down the right side. Morris with a nice pickup and a root lumber first down. And that's a dangerous runner if you let him on the outside. And Aiden Morris has got that speed to break tackles, you know, and just motor down that right sideline. We saw him do it earlier on and he can do it again. Ball up to the 35-yard line. Clock keeps ticking. Back to Luganville this time. Luganville bounces off the line, and he is on the right side. Does he stay in bounds? He does, but it's a loss of yards for the Rockets. And he made a little bit out of that, and there wasn't much there. He got banged right just as he hit the line of scrimmage and pushed back. He would keep his feet moving forward, but... A loss of one, second down, 11. And that's what this Rams defense has got to do right now. They've got to stop the Rockets dead in their tracks. Girton, play action, wants to pass, throws, and through the hands of Morris that time. Morris would have gone down right where he caught it. It would have been a gain of five. The Jason Helton there on the, on the knockdown right there. Boy, he just hammered Morris. A lot of hard hitting in this game, I'll tell you. Two wide receivers split out left of this formation. Curtin rolls that way. Curtin. Throws, that one's short of the target, incomplete. Fourth down, 11. And this would be an awfully long field goal for Suter. He's got the leg for it though, but yeah, you're right. For high school, this is a long field goal attempt. It'd be a 46 yarder? Uh, it'd be a 52 yarder. 52 yarder. They're gonna keep the offense on the field. Luganville lined up to the left of Girton. Two wide receivers split either way. Girton to pass. Girton throws over the top. Has a man caught. 
First down, Rockets. Colin as Harris. that was hauled in by Colin Harris. And I'll tell you what, you got to be impressed with the Rockets' route running because these guys are really, you know, got some nice... Morris does the same thing. Harris does it on this one here, just as, like, cut across the middle, take your chances. You know you got defense all around you. Take your chances, cut across that middle, and find yourself open. And Girton's been able to find him. An impressive performance from the freshman in this playoff game. Girton hands this one to Luganville. Luganville, some space on the left. Nice cut back by Luganville on that one right there. Keeps him in bounds. Clock down to 50 seconds. Both teams still three timeouts left and a whole quarter remaining. Rockets have done a nice job with clock management here in the second half. Yeah, they were kind of look like they were kind of they were going to run the timeout, but now they're going back to that pass game again. Well, good job by Luke and Bill to break loose. Look out, look Logan out. Logan Bill, goal line, touchdown Rockets. Wow. I'll tell you what, he shook off that first defender, and I thought, uh-oh, that's, that's trouble right there because he's going to be able, nobody around him right there in that one side, and he was able to weave his way right through there for the touchdown. 16-yard score. Suter back on for the PAT. Luganville now with 31 touchdowns on the year after his second of the day. Snaps high, Suter's kick is up, and it is good. 28 to eight, the score here in USV on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN. Twenty-eight to eight, the score here at Upper Scioto Valley High School. Pandora on top of USV in the first round of the OHSAA State Playoffs. Hard to believe it's playoff time here. Well, they've been Rockets have been consistent on all their kickoffs. They're going to the same spot every time. That time there, they almost been able to capitalize on it. This drive will start from the 31-yard line for USV. Three wide receivers split out to the right side. Sanders stays at quarterback. Why not? Played pretty well throwing the football in the second half. Now Sanders in trouble. Able to get rid of the football down the sideline, and that is incomplete. That looked pretty good, but the referee says out of bounds. Two seconds on the clock. So this will be the last play of the third quarter. Good defensive coverage there by number three, Isaac Stahl, who's got one interception this season, who's going for number two right there. I still, I mean, hey, you can rewind on your DVR if you want, check it out. I don't have the benefit of replay up here, but I think it was very, very close. Yeah, I think his feet might have been in bounds right there. Doesn't matter. Second down, 10. Nope. Two seconds in the third quarter. Sanders steps up, throws deep, and well over the head of his target, and is picked off by Aiden Morris. Morris breaks a tackle. He's going to have a nice return after this one. Morris back to the left side, brought down as he crosses the 45. Flagging up to the 46, we've got a flag on the far side of the field. Are you ready for this, Evan? That's eighth interception this season by Aiden Morris. Ooh. Two of them he's returned for touchdowns. <laughs> that one there, he looked like a center fielder going back and catching it. I assume this will stand, but... 
We'll wait for the call before we head to break. It is the last play of the third quarter. They're looking like it's going against the Rockets. But... The question is, was it before or after? Oh, it's a block in the back on the return, so it will stay with the Rockets. They'll back them up 15 yards. So they'll flip the field during the break, and when we return, the Rockets will take over from their own 37-yard line. They lead 28-8 here on WOSN, fourth quarter coming up after this. Welcome back, and it's not the start of the third quarter. This is actually an untimed down to end, or sorry, not the start of the fourth quarter. This is an untimed down to, to end the fourth quarter as the pass goes deep and incomplete. So now we have the end of the third wow. quarter. <laughs> Very c confusing moment there. And so they'll flip the field, and the fourth quarter will start. We'll keep it here, just because we did just take that break. So your score, 28-8. to eight. Pandora on top. They have the football. I want to thank our sponsors again tonight, our scoreboard sponsor, Sprunger Insurance, and our first down sponsor, Root Lumber. Dar, the state moving to an extended, extended playoff format and certainly making their money, but it is also certainly causing some very lopsided affairs across the state as kind of looking over your shoulder here, seeing Coldwater up 38-0, Marion Local up 38-0. We got, uh, it was at Versailles up by like 50, Macomb leading 49-3, Carey up 49-6. I mean, good for some of the teams that squeak well, into the playoffs, but yeah, we might it be is, getting a little too expanded here. And the danger of that is when you got a 16 seed team going up against the number one team, injuries, you know, yeah. for the number one team, you know, particularly, you know, you know they're probably going to win the game, you know, although upsets do happen. But, you know, you worry about injuries to, to key players during those kind of games and stuff. And these kind of matchups, you know, number eight against number nine, these are the best ones. So you throw these guys in the middle where you're pretty evenly matched between the two teams, and you're going to get your best games. But, yeah, it's kind of scary when you got, you know, and you got guys traveling a long distance too. And there's a root lumber first down as the Rockets throw quickly out to the left side. The other thing is travel. You know, a lot yeah. of these teams are, are traveling very far for their games. I know I can't remember the specific game, but there was a team that traveled three hours to get to their matchup tonight. They're losing 49-0 to at halftime. Yeah, that was... And they're traveling three hours back. That's Lucasville uh, Valley uh, High School coming all the way up from near West Virginia down there around Williamsburg to play Alanesis tonight, you know. And like I said, that's a three-hour drive up here, you know, and you're getting thumped. You got to get back in the the bus and turn around and ride three hours back again. That's a tough one. Now they hand this one to Wyatt Russell. Russell has some space on the left side. Russell got oh, some wheels as he's tripped up crossing the 30, crossing the 25, or actually he might have been down just shy of that 25 yard line. But either way, a big pickup for the lumber first down. Well, you're seeing a little bit of fatigue on the side of USV too, I'm sure. You know, that's they played hard all night long and now you're seeing guys like Russell, who's a, a senior 220-pound fullback, you know, six-foot fullback, just lumbering down there and just, you know, knocking a couple guys out of his way. I got a feeling you're going to see Russell carry the ball a few more times here in the fourth quarter. Russell lined up to the right of Girton. Luganville lined up behind him. Luganville will get the carry. Luganville follows Russell up the hole and well-filled. Right there by Maddox Underwood. Play goes for about four. Make it a gain of three on the play. Second down seven here. The USB came into this game with a six game winning streak after going starting the season at two and two. You know, so they've been able to put in. They had, like I said, they had one game where they scored 86 points. Girton 
going to the top to the end zone. That one's caught, and another touchdown as Colin Harris hauls it in. Boy, the Rockets, the Rockets uh, receivers have done just an outstanding job of playing off the defensive, defensive backs and getting in position, getting themselves in front of the back so that they can't do a whole lot about it, and then getting up there and getting some elevation to pull those down. How nice is it for a freshman quarterback to be able to just toss the ball up? Not that he hasn't done a great job, Dar. He's done a fantastic job. But these receivers have been so great tonight. Colin Harris with some tough catches. Aiden Morris with some tough catches. And really making Gurton look good tonight as if he needed any help doing so. Like I said, those two particular guys, Harris and Morris, are only juniors coming back next season for these Rockets. PAT good from Suter. He's perfect tonight and the score 35 to 8 on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard as we step aside. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! Go Rockets indeed as the Rockets lead this one 35 to 8. Behind three touchdown passes from freshman quarterback Corey Gurton. This kick picked up by Ryan Roberts. Roberts breaks a tackle and can't break the next one as he's brought down by Noah Burkholder and Lucas Deckard. And Gurton came in with only three touchdown passes for the season. You know, not playing a whole lot because they had Carson Meyer earlier on. And then they brought in Tanner Leakey after that. But then you turn, turn around and Gurton's, you know, just done an outstanding job as a freshman tonight. I mean, three touchdown passes tonight. It gives him six for the season. And he's thrown a lot of nice balls. But he has. like you said, you know, it's nice to have two receivers out there that have the ability to get in position the way these guys have and then leap up and grab those balls. Sanders pulls it down, nowhere to go, now throws, and that pass incomplete. And you can see the frustration on that young man because you know, coming into this season, into this, into this game, he's, you know, at 1,752 yards, he hasn't been able to run the ball very effectively tonight. They put him back at quarterback, and he's trying to do everything he can, you know, mm -hmm. to get this Rams offense going. But, you know, it's, it's a tough, tough rocket defense tonight. Spread formation. Two either side. Sanders wants to run. Cuts up the field and picks up a couple. They give him three, it brings up a third and seven. playing against Eden again a number no, number one against a number 16 team you know 57 to 3 right now <laughs> uh, it's just tough it's just tough yeah I, I wonder I mean I haven't talked to many coaches but I wonder what they would say if you asked them would you rather get into the playoffs and get throttled or just take the night off as Sanders gets up the field and a nice pickup for the root lumber first down and that was a big one on third and seven uh, but I would be curious to know what coaches have to say about something like that. You know, it's like in the basketball tournament where everybody gets in the tournament, but at least the, the top-seeded teams have an option. You know, they can either take a bye or they can play their first game. You know, you don't have that in this, in this playoffs in football. And generally in the first round in your, in your sectional tournament, you're not traveling two hours no, to get to your, no. your matchup. Yeah, you, these divisions, if they've got, you know, these regions are really spread out, too. Sanders on first down, looking to throw. Avoids one tackler, now throws, and there's a flag down. Helton, caught, or excuse me, Reynolds caught the ball on the ground. And so it, would, it goes as a two-yard loss as it stands. We'll see what the penalty is. Referee saying holding against USV. Well, 
Alexander is just he, he's he dead tired out there for one thing, and you can see the you know tell from his body language the frustration that the young man has. He had a great run when the run up the, earlier on, but you know it's been just relentless pursuit by the Rocket defense, and they've been in the backfield more often than not, and you know just making him run you know throw on the run. You know, something he probably hasn't done a whole lot of this season. You know, if not, he's had to tuck it in and try to find an opening. In the meantime, the linebackers have been able to, you know, get in position at that point then. You know, so it's, it's just been a tough game all the way around for him. The penalty is accepted. Brings up first and 23. I'll tell you what, the scary thing for Rams opposition is Sanders is only a junior as well. That's right. <laughs> 1,700 yards this year. Imagine what he'll do as a senior. Can't wait to watch him on the hardwood coming up soon, but some work to do here on the gridiron as he completes that pass. And he throws a nice ball. I mean, that was a, that was a fired in there, a nice little rope right in there to, his, to look like Underwood caught that ball. Because they kind of swapped off between the two of them, Underwood now playing in the receiver position. But he, he throws a good ball when he's got time to throw it. Rockets just haven't given him that much time. Ball up to the Rocket 35 for second down, six. Sanders fakes the pass and he gets hit. Stays in bounds and short of the first down. Third and short coming up. Another great open field tackle there by Colin Harris on that side over there too to take Sanders' legs out from under him. We've seen a lot of that tonight by you know by the Rocket defense. It got you know a lot of good open field tackles, a lot of one on ones too. You know you know when you guys get to the outside like Sanders does. You know, you're one-on-one -on -one with the defensive back, and they're making the plays. Third down two. Sanders hands it off. Roberts. Roberts, nice cut up field, and he has enough for the lumber first down. Rams move the sticks as the clock hits 726. That rhymed. Yes, and it I, did. I, I'm going to say it was intentional. I did it for sure. It was on purpose. Yeah, go go with that. <laughs> Those are usually the best ones when you don't know that you're going to do it. <laughs> Rams back to that spread formation. Well, you got to be impressed with the Rams too, because they're they're still showing a lot of fight out there. You know, they're down 35 to eight. You know, but they're still you know hustling out there, to, you know, putting everything they can, and they'd love to put another you know seven or eight points on the board right here. Sanders to pass. Plenty of time. Still time. Still time, now runs out of it as he gets up field and he falls forward for a yard or two. It looks like the Rockets are kind of spreading it out a little bit and their defensive backs too, they're kind of playing that little prevent back there. Willing to give up those five, you know, three, four, five yards, but not the deep one. It's a gain of one, second down nine. Three wide receivers out left this time of this formation. Sanders, the fake, now throws over the top and in and out of his receiver's hands. Good thing there's no safety working back yeah. there. That looks like Morris came up a little bit on that one there. If he'd been back there in the back, he might have had another pick. So it brings up third down nine. Another pass there for Helton. You know, just you know, that was fired in there pretty hard and just right off his hands. A little bit behind him, he had to kind of turn around a little bit. Three left. Sanders running right. Designed run. 
Sanders makes a couple guys miss, gets up field, and eventually pushed out of bounds, but he picks up the root lumber first down on a designed run on third and nine. And that's the run that you expected from Alex Sanders all night long. Like, get to the outside, stay behind your blockers a little bit until you can find your own openings, and that's what he was able to do there. And then he started picking his way through the defense, you know, the defense to get those extra yards. Like I said, they're, they're still playing hard out there. They're still trying to, you know, make things happen. And now a man jumps. So take off five yards. Oh, no, sorry. They say offside against Pandora. The referee in the center of the field moved the ball back five yards, but the referee said it was against uh, the Rockets. Yeah. Moved it the wrong way. <laughs> All right, so he didn't change the call, but it is against USV officially. Sanders to the left side this time. Sanders, nowhere to go with it. Sanders now throws, ball comes out. And it's picked up by USB's Tommy Carl. Well, I mean, tell you, Sanders got rocked right there. He's slow getting up because he just got you know, sandwiched between two defenders. Looks like Sanders might have to come out for a play. Yeah, it looked like he took a shot right up underneath his, his chin guard. So the ball's on the 14-yard line. Sanders off the field for at least this play. I believe that Maddox Underwood, the backup quarterback, or the starting quarterback, really, will be the quarterback for this play, and he will. Sanders has the helmet back on on the sideline. Underwood takes the snap, passes quickly, and it's caught. Out of bounds goes the receiver. That's Wyatt Helton. Sanders trots well. Walks back walks. into the game. He's tired, young man. Can't blame him. It's a third down goal from the, just inside the 10 yard line. Man, we talked about the, you know, Pandora Gilbo and what they've got next year coming back. With their junior receivers and a freshman quarterback. But you look on the other side with USV too. I mean, Maddox Underwood is just a sophomore. You know, Alex and Sanders has come back as a junior. You know, this year, we'll be seeing Ryan next Roberts. Year. Ryan Roberts, a freshman. And Mason Thompson, one of the receivers, only mm. a sophomore. Sanders on third down. Throws, end zone, and incomplete. Good coverage in the end zone by the Rockets. Looks like Carson Meyer in there on the coverage. So fourth down nine, 521 on the clock. Where they're really going to hurt is in their front, is their front line. You know, yeah, a lot of seniors on that front line for uh, some big US boys. Vegas. Yeah, some real big boys. You know, so that's where they're going to have to make some replacements and stuff. But their position players and their skill players, you know, they got a lot of those guys coming back. So a team that was eight and two this season, you know, they have a lot to look forward to next year. And that pass to the end zone is incomplete. And that was fourth down, so we'll have a turnover on downs. The Rockets hold strong. 5-16 on the clock. A couple of first downs on this drive for the Rockets, and they can put this game away then and move on to the next round. Touchdown by the Rockets sends us to a running clock. But they've run the ball so effectively, we may see a, the last 5-16 tick down pretty quickly. 
Luganville cuts inside. Oh, Luganville off to the races. Luganville brought down from behind a touchdown saving tackle by Maddox Underwood. But a big gain from Luganville and another root lumber first down. Well, and he hasn't had a whole lot of those tonight as well. He's had some nice runs and stuff, but not breaking one like he did on that one right there. But boy, when he get in the open. But, you know, Underwood had the angle on him too. So that's, you know, he had an opportunity to bring him down then. It's up to the 41-yard line. He picks those runs like that, and he won't be running the timeout. So just <laughs> I'll put another touchdown on the board. Well, they just took him out of the game. Tanner Leakty back at the running back spot. Leakty will get the carry, and he's met in the backfield. Might have gained a yard. The big thing is that clock continues to run. Mm -hmm. Sprunger Insurance scoreboard reads 35 to 8. The Rockets with a well rounded performance here. Three touchdowns in the air, two on the ground. And a really impressive, composed performance from the freshman quarterback, Corey Girton. And what a great job by this Rocket defense all night long. Girton to the left side. That one's caught by Colin Harris. Harris stays in bounds and in fact gets forward for the root lumber first down. The Rockets can continue to throw the ball. I mean, they're not content to run the climb out. Luganville still out of the game. Might be it for him tonight in the big victory. Uh, he had a big night all night long on defense as well as, you know, offense. So he's got to be a tired young man as well. Well-deserved rest at this point. Wyatt Russell carries this one, and Russell still going. Somehow gets around the defense and into the end zone for the Rocket touchdown. What in the world happened there? It looked like he was going to fall down before the line of scrimmage, and he ends up in the end zone. And the big guy takes it to the house, I'll tell you. Right. So three scores on the ground, three scores in the air for the Rockets, and Elam Suter trots on to try the PAT. He's five for five tonight. Suter lines it up. Kick is up and it is good. 42 to eight as we step aside. 3.07 on the clock. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Root Lumber. Root Lumber has everything you need to get the job done, whether you're a contractor or a do-it-yourselfer. Visit us at rootlumber.com. 3.07 to go here at USV. The Pandora Rockets on top, 42 to eight. And I'm looking at some of the scores in the area. I know at this point, by the time you're watching this, you should have at least had the opportunity to check other scores. Let's see. The BBC's Arlington Red Devils down 48 to 24. That's Mac football, Delva St. Oh John's on top of Arlington, a team that had a chance at a BBC title. Finished the regular season 9 and 1. They're only lost to Macomb. And yet, you know. Like you said, it's a MAC team. You run into a MAC team, anything can happen. And then elsewhere in the BBC, we had the Liberty Benton Eagles on top in their matchup with Archbold. First down 10. Clock 
a running one as the score is outside of 30 and Underwood the quarterback this time and that's incomplete off the back of the defender. That was Ben Burkholder on the far side. And Dar, I know we've had a lot of thoughts throughout this game, one of which is that both of these teams have a lot returning. At the end of the day, yes, Pandora moves on. They'll be eight and three. The Rams fall to eight and three as well, but a good season for USV. Oh, absolutely. A good season in a lot of ways. Like I said, they, you're on a six game winning streak after the and it started the season at two and two, you know, and they just, you know, they rode the, uh, Alex Sanders all season long, no doubt about it. Get, kid came in with 1,752 yards starting, you know, before this game, and he's worked hard all night long. And so, so, but again, you got a lot of guys coming back in your skill position players for USV. You know, and an opportunity to, to be back in the same position next season as well. You know, and so, you know, you can't take anything away from them. They fought hard all night. They just couldn't seem to get the momentum going to shift over to them on their side of the ball. You know, they have some opportunities. They just couldn't finish it off. And, you know, it's unfortunate for them because, they, you know, it looked like, you know, they had a couple interceptions on rocket passes. They had fumble recovery as well. You know, had good field position throughout the game. But, you know, just couldn't get past that rocket defense. You know, and, and PG's defense just kind of shut them down when they got down there in the third, fourth, and down, you know, opportunities. Now Underwood throws, and this one's caught through the contact. Connor Scott with the grab. 30 seconds on the clock. Third down. Not sure if USB will run another play here. They don't need to. Bringing some seniors off the field. Blaine Castle just moments ago. This one. Tommy Carl as he exits, and you can see Jason Helton coming off the field as well, another senior. A nice reception and tribute to those student athletes as the clock hits zero and the Rockets move on, winning this one 42 to 8. I tell you, not, not what I expected to see. I, you know, I expected a close game between the eight and nine seeds in this tournament, but. Uh, you know, you look at the, the, both the way that Pandora played, they took advantage of the opportunities they got. USV just wasn't able to do that. But, you know, a hard-fought game, two, you know, small schools going at it and head-to-head. -head. You know, a lot of banging around out there. You see a lot of guys walking off. They're going to feel this tomorrow, I'll tell you that right now. There's going to be a lot of sore bodies. But give Pandora credit for, you know, the way they played. They mixed the pass and the running very effectively tonight. You got, like you said, three scores on the ground, three scores in the air. And USV just not able to, to come up with a answer for that Pandora Gilbo Rocket defense. So, you know, but give them credit. Great season for USV, finishing eight and three this season, and Pandora moving on. I want to thank our sponsors one more time. The scoreboard sponsor Sprunger Insurance. Our first down sponsor Root Lumber. I want to thank the USV Athletic Department for their hospitality tonight. And as always, I want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to high school football on WOSN. For Olivia and Abby on the cameras and for my partner, Darn Evergall, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night and God bless.